So let's start the week with a Transformer Slag podcast Patreon listener question. Once again, if you want to be part of the Transformer Slag podcast Patreon, help support the podcast. Let us know we're doing a half decent job here in the Transformer world, giving you the updates, news, reviews, and of course, educational knowledge on what's going on here in the Transformer world. Again, patreon.com forward slash proto man, or check the pinned comment or the description below. What does it get you if you Support the podcast. We'll get to your name in the end credit scroll at the end of every segment moving forward. Access to the exclusive Transformer Slag podcast discord where we share the news, break the news, and share lore. And of course, even some deals that are happening around in the Transformer world to save money on your hobby. And what a hobby it is. Depending on what tier also, you might get a little something something in the mail. Or depending on what tier, you might be able to ask a Patreon listener question here on the podcast. And we have one here today. From Space Ghostal, longtime patron of the podcast, and he wants to know Hello, Proto Man. I have been getting some well loved G1 toys and noticed that they all have weird sticker placement on them. Not one toy is the same. One of the Starscream wings has the most stickers all in one place, and some kid in the 80s put some stickers, uh, put, um, put some sticker sheets all over the place, and I just don't understand it. I love this kind of stuff, and I have no plans of removing it. What are your thoughts on stickers and transformers? How do you feel about repro labels and places like Toy Hacks? And do you relabel transformer toys yourself? Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll tackle the first part. Um, what do I think about stickers? Uh, personally, in the modern era of transformers, I don't really think stickers have a place. I mean, we really have reached the point where paint technology, factory applied paint technology, tampo graph technology is so spot on that stickers don't really serve a purpose. And, you know, we had stickers in the modern era in the tail end of T Titan's Return and all of Power of the Primes. And they quickly went about face on that one because they realized just how bad that turned out for a lot of the figures both visually and also in terms of how it arrived out of the factory there was the stickers were because a lot of stickers had foil in them and they they had to like get that shininess they'd start to crimp and and kind of curl before they even reached their destination and dep depending on how they were stored the toys it's the same thing foil is an extra layer that goes on top of the paper sticker and foil, unfortunately, depending on certain heat conditions, uh, it could curl. And so you get this wrinkly kind of weird shaped sticker before it even made it to you. And if it was on like a hot truck going across America to a Walmart, you know, might not be the case. I mean, the best example I always bring up is uh, Power of the Prime's Voyager Class Elite One. Fantastic mold. I love that mold. Very unique design. But the stickers on her wings, oh my goodness. Like, the secondary market on her is not going to look good in the long run. That was just, I would have done it very differently. There's a whole different way I would have applied myself to that. But that being said, I like stickers in the modern era when it's more of a creative optional kind of thing. And what I mean by that is, like, uh, Titan's Return Leader Class Megatron, the one that uh, came with a little sticker sheet where you had, like, an option if you wanted to make them an Autobot or a Decepticon, kind of reflecting on what was going on in the IDW comic books at the time, or even going a little more back from that, like the Generations Thrilling 30, Roadblock, and Whirl, that had like those extra sticker sheets if you wanted to be make it really G1 1985 toy accurate. You know, you could have the toy as it is, looks really nice and clean, looks like almost like a, an animation model and fits in with your collection. But if you wanted optionally to make it look super toy accurate, here's this crazy sticker sheet with all these options i like it when it's a like again a visual creative option that isn't like if it's not applied it isn't taking away from the base product like it'll still have the autobot logo tampograph it'll still have all the paint in the right places but if you wanted to like you know put some visual flair on it you know give it that give it that look that makes it all of a sudden have that that 1984 g1 accurate decals or like you know race car advertising could be an option something that's on a sticker sheet it's there and if it's not hey it's it's not a big deal it doesn't hinder the toy or anything like that or like in the case of the megatron if it's a character that had kind of a faction swap gimmick but not like in the sense of like a rotating 
gimmick that could might hinder the toy or the transformation uh you just have like a sticker you could put and it works that way too you know i'm reminded of like uh ravage x9 from the beast wars line one of the few beast wars toys that actually had stickers that was a new mold and i'll get into that in a moment but like you had an option do you want to have that like spark chamber on his chest or do you want to have this megatron g1 sticker on his chest and if they would have had that being a, a swappable faction kind of thing where it was like a spinning thing it might have hindered the transformation or the plastic or whatever so you kind of give people an option like that i prefer the creative options over something that's a more standardized kind of look and I mean, just going into it, since I mentioned it, you know, when you look into the modern era of Transformer toys, once you got to Beast Wars, like after leaving G2, which was very much still a very Generation 1 kind of product in terms of what 50% of that line was, uh, once you get into G2 with Kenner and you get that modern construction, modern design and engineering, you also have that modern application to how you know, deco is going to be, and there was no stickers. Yeah, you had those little, you know, those little Energon chip rub things that they, they added in, like, Series 3 moving onward and with the transmetals, but I almost don't even count those as a sticker, almost as, like, a an add-on mood ring that was tucked away in the corner, if anything else. Uh, I mean, when it comes to Beast Wars, the only stickers that really appear is more Japanese stuff, and most of that Japanese stuff was, again, no surprise, pre-existing molds from generation two or before like whether it be the flip changers or you know atb megatron um aka uh, smokescreen and and uh and dreadwing and all of those were factory applied on top of that so you know outside of those few you know ones there that still had stickers on them most of the beast wars era moving forward was pre-applied stickers or no stickers at all same thing, going into Robots in the Skies 1.0 or Machine Wars even, which was happening at the same time as Beast Wars. There was stickers. Some of the toys had to be factory applied. Some of the toys were already factory applied. Factory applied ones had to be like, you know, Starscream or Optimus Prime from Machine Wars. But all of those molds were molds based from an era when that stuff was still a thing, a pre-Beast Wars era. So they kind of had that lingering, you know, uh, side effect of being from a bygone era. The second we get into Unicron Trilogy, the only stickers you saw were stickers on the side that was a trading card. You know, like it, it's at that point, it started to get really phased out. And yeah, once in a while, there'd be that one or two figures that had a sticker on it, like out of like one out of 100 Transformer toys between like, God, 2002 and 2008. Maybe you had like a, a sticker on it or something or again, a tampo graph or, or something that was for a rub sign. But in general, it just kind of got phased out just because it, it didn't work out in the long run in terms of a lot of different things. And probably even from the factory, they maybe had to be applied by hand and they didn't want to have to put it on the consumer. So, you know, and you didn't really see it again until the dreaded Titan Class Metroplex, which had that sticker sheet that had over 100 stickers on it. Yeah, I just picked the ones that kind of worked visually, and then I just gave up at that point. Same thing with Fortress Maximus and Trypticon. Like, ugh, there's a reason why you haven't seen that really since Power of the Prime. You know, like, it's just, it's not something that's really something that works out. I don't mind it on the side. You include it on the side. Hey, do you want Soundwave to have a yellow visor instead of the red one we packed him in with? We'll give you a sticker sheet for that. Hey, do you want, like, uh, you know, a sticker that says Cassette Man that you could put on Soundwave's chest. You could give that old Microman homage. Yeah, I don't mind that stuff on the side being included. But I don't want stuff that's included as a sticker sheet that's necessary in order to achieve that true look for the character. It should be a factory applied. Not a factory applied, a tampo graph or something painted in. That's just me personally. And again, knowing as a collector of Generation 1 and someone who also buys and sells Transformers extensively... And seeing how the secondary market is when it comes to stickers, oof, you don't want to have to deal with those. You really don't. Um, the second part of your question here, so how do I feel about, like, let's say, repro labels? You know, like, how do I feel about those and everything like that? Well, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to repro labels. Now, Aaron, Bra Aaron Black, the creator of Repro Labels and Toy Hacks, um, I love that guy, super talented dude. People don't know, but he was actually the brainchild and the founder of, of the very first TFCon. 
Like he, if there's no TFCon, if not for Aaron Black, Black and him wanting to uh, get some money together for a mortgage for his first house. So without him, there is no TFCon. So credit to him too. But he doesn't get sung, uh, sung enough how much how important he was in the creation of uh, TFCon. But uh, Aaron does great work, and um, everything that he does is fantastic. But that being said, I lean more towards his upgrade kits that he does and the creative stuff on his website. I'm not a big fan of the repro label stuff, and this is just me personally, primarily because as someone who buys and sells G1, and I always know if people could do terrible stuff and manipulate the truth in order to make a couple of bucks, they will. And if someone's trying to sell me some G1 product and telling me how great the stickers are, And those stickers are actually the repro label stickers that he bought for like five bucks on the side so that now he could charge me $50 more for how great the stickers are. I don't I don't appreciate that kind of stuff. And it it ends up leading to a whole bunch of G1 toys in the secondary market that might not be. And again, this is just me pure. It might not be like the real product. Now, I know some people don't care. They don't care. They just want it to look the best it could possibly look. But as someone who's a purist and wants to correct the true product, and I don't like buying reissues, and I don't like you know buying that, that or repro accessories, I, I kind of have a thing against that. And I feel that stuff like that kind of hurts the secondary market. I'm very happy that 99% of my Transformer G1 stuff I bought before a lot of this stuff existed, both reissues and repro labels. But I can't imagine today, if you're someone that's starting today and trying to buy everything from a purist standpoint, and you pick up this like G1 Mirage and you go, wow, the stickers are perfect on this, and you don't know that they came from repro labels. And, you know, it it wasn't the case. And even the bootleg, you know, it was a bootleg and it uses repro labels to really not make it look like a bootleg. So there's a lot of there's a lot of that kind of like dicey stuff that exists, unfortunately, due to repro labels and toy hacks existing. I understand from a personal collection standpoint yeah you want to make your your optimus prime look the best he could possibly be because those old stickers are are wrinkled and worn out that's cool it's just i worry when that optimus prime then ends up in the secondary market and is falsely sold in the wrong way ends up on ebay and someone going look how perfect it is look how perfect the stickers are 1984 original and not really you know, so that's where I kind of have that other thing. But the other stuff that he does, the creative stuff, like he did back in the day, it's no longer on the website. He did a Wheelamus Prime sticker sheet where you could turn your old G1 wheelie into Wheelamus Prime. I loved that kind of stuff. He did a sticker sheet back in the day that was an upgrade set for your original Classics Rodimus. I bought two of them because the original Classics Rodimus, his little buzzsaw accessory, was just kind of like this black disc in his wrist. So it gave this little silver metal kind of black uh, buzzsaw look to it that made your figure look a little nicer not to mention uh, the original classics Rodimus had a orange spoiler instead of yellow so it had stickers to make it a yellow spoiler Uh, he even did some upgrade sets that you could get that uh, Indiana Jones mutt figure which is Shia LaBeouf and turn it into Sam Witwicky and even give him the shirt that Sam Witwicky was wearing when he first met Bumblebee in the first Transformers 2007 movie. So there's there's a lot of cool little upgrade sets that make your figures better. Uh, but it's just the reproduction one stuff that kind of always sits weird in my stomach just because I, I know how people are and how that kind of stuff could kind of be misrepresented. If it was always kept in, t- in terms of in-personal collections and people were honest about it, then I'd have no problem. But it's just when... When you have guys, you know, selling you stuff and saying, oh, it's it's perfect. It's this. It's that. That's a different story. Um, and to answer your last part, like, yes, do I relabel? Uh, if, 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 it, if that if that doesn't tell you, no, I don't. Uh, I don't relabel. Uh, the, again, the only repro labels I've ever bought from Aaron and his crew have been the upgrade stuff that were really creative. Uh, he did this amazing one back in the day. Uh, Salvage, which was the red pickup truck from the 2007 movie. Uh, turn it into hot rod like a rodimus prime hot rod he had an upgrade sticker set for that and it was really cool and it kind of worked kind of worked it was fun so i bought that one this was like way before we had hot rod in the movie we're talking you know 2007 2008 uh he did a great he did a whole bunch of great repro label sets for all the different tf con exclusives throughout the years there's a lot of really good stuff that he's done on the creative side of things i appreciate the upgrade kit uh, the upgrade sticker sets and everything like that it's the repro stuff that kind of again, like I said before, is the one that makes me go, "Mm, 
I, I really hope that people don't use that, you know, use that in a way that's not genuine in a lot of ways, because I, I see that too often. I, I see that way too often where I've had guys that they'll buy Chinese bootleg reissues, which are like completely fake. And they'll get a repro label uh, sticker set because the Chinese bootleg stickers, they're kind of cut badly, so you can't really tell. So they'll get the, the great high quality ones that Aaron does, slap that on it instead, uh, you know, get some reissue accessories because the reissue accessories also have a way that are, you know, less undetectable and then try to sell it as, oh, this is 100% complete, perfect generation one blue streak, you know? It's perfect. Look at it. Oh my God, look at the stickers. Oh, it's perfect. You know, normally the shin stickers, they get all like worn out and everything because of the transformation and, and the forearm ones and people fall for it. People fall for it. They go, oh wow, that's that's great. And then they, they spend $200 on that perfect blue streak or something. And, and I don't want that to happen to people. I don't want that to happen to them. And too many times I've seen people try to sell Transformer product that is genuinely the original and it's not. And I'm not saying from the sticker level, but I'm saying even from the actual figure level, and then the stickers are just an extra layer to that, where you could get a really beat up, legitimate G1 Optimus Prime, you get a repro label sheet, and then you try to sell it as, oh, look how perfect, it's never even left the box, look how perfect the stickers are. And it's like, mm, I don't know, man, I do not know, I don't know. So that's just kind of my like long-winded take on it. Um, in the modern era, we don't really need stickers, keep it as a creative option on the side at best. Uh, that's really the short answer for that. From the repro label side of things, again, I like the creative side. You know, stuff that, that makes it better, stuff that's different from what we already got uh, from the core product. Yeah, that's cool. But that's where it kind of ends with that too. So I hope that answers that question. And if you want to ask a question like, again, Space Ghostal over here, uh, patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pinned comment or the description below. And uh, thanks for all the love and support from all the fans. We had a great live stream on Saturday. And uh, hope to talk to you all soon. We're going to have a, probably a very busy week in the world of Transformers.